everybody. Um, so today I'm going to talk about something different. I'm not going to talk about transgenderism, transsexuality, or any other topic like that. Um, I'm going to talk about space travel. So um, in science fiction, you know, we often see, you um, know, like in Battlestar Galactica and in Star Trek, we see uh, spaceships going from planet to planet very fast. You know, they, they travel in a matter of hours and they reach their destination and um, you know it's pretty easy um, when we look at the reality now though, it's a little bit more sad you know because uh, the NASA is struggling to you know keep their shuttles and going to space and we haven't gone back to the moon we haven't sent anybody there you know in decades and the prospects you know of exploring Mars although we have all the technology today don't really seem uh, that near, you know, especially with the economics, the economics right now, and the fact that it's really easy for us to send robots to Mars to do all our experiments. It just doesn't seem like men will make it to Mars, you know, before like 2050, or like if they even make it before the end of the century, or ever, in fact. And that's pretty sad. Um, but you know, the, the real question I think for the sci-fi fans is are we someday going to be able to uh, send people to other planets, you know, outside of our solar system to colonize other planets, um, other galaxies even, and things like that. And I think from uh, a realistic point of view, you know, if you uh, know something about physics, you realize that, uh, you know, the prospect is actually, uh, you know, things are looking kind of bleak. To be honest, because just you know, colonizing a planet like Mars with our current technology seems almost impossible. Um, well, there's obvious reasons, like the fact that Mars, you know, barely has an atmosphere, and uh, the atmosphere is like 98% carbon carbon dioxide. It's not breathable. Um, it's cold, etc. You know, those factors make it really hard to. Um, to get people to survive there and you know doing something like terraforming to change the atmosphere of Mars also seems like a huge technical challenge furthermore it's a huge technical challenge that if we wanted to realize it we'd have to bring a lot of equipment to Mars but right now you know just sending one pound of material into space costs thousands of dollars you know because our rockets are really inefficient and costly you know so at the, our current technological level, it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to colonize anything, you know, outside of our solar system. And furthermore, it looks like even colonizing the moon or Mars is very far-fetched at the moment. Um, assuming that we can get some better technologies and just rockets to, you know, put people into space, then, you know, it becomes kind of feasible, you know, just by improving, you know, chemical rockets, you know, or by using nuclear propulsion, it might be able to uh, send people to Mars in a matter of maybe a few weeks, you know, far away in the future, maybe we'll, we'll be able to uh, send people to Mars in a few weeks, um, maybe even a few days, you know, wouldn't be impossible. Um, but even there, you know, that wouldn't be super practical and, uh, you know, just the cost of, of doing it, you know, if, if you're thinking of going to Mars to uh, mine metals, for example, or things like that, it just seems like it won't be worth the cost, and people just aren't going to do it. But anyway, assuming that someday we have some super advanced technology that allows us to, you know, to put people into orbit super easily, um, are we ever going to be able to uh, leave the solar system? Well, there's one major problem, is that um, Einstein, you know, and he postulated the theory of relativity, and it basically uh, tells us that the speed of light is a limiting factor. That it's not possible in this universe to go faster than the speed of light. And light goes very fast, you know. It goes uh, 300,000 kilometers per second, so it can go all the way to the moon in about one second. And that seems really fast on our scale here of the Earth, 
you know, light can go all the way around the Earth several times in just one second. But on an astronomical scale, you know, it's actually very long. You know, I mean, for light to go from the Sun to the Earth it takes about eight minutes. You know, it's already getting a little bit long. And for light to go all the way, you know, to the nearest stars would take several years. So if we had the technology to reach the speed of light, which we don't at the moment, unfortunately, it would still take us years to bring people to, uh, to other star systems. Furthermore, we haven't discovered any inhabitable, inhabitable planets in other star systems. So even if we could get there, you know, what would those people do over there? They would just be stranded and, you know, they would be forced to come back to Earth. So it wouldn't really be very useful. That being said, uh, if we think from a point of view of just, you know, sending people to live to other planets, if we knew of other inhabitable planets in, uh, in our galaxy, and we had a technology to get, you know, arbitrarily close to the speed of light, it might still be possible to send humans to these planets, because the closer you travel to the speed of light, uh, the more there's a time contraction phenomenon going on. So it means when you get really, really close to the speed of light, um, there's going to be less time that, that is going to elapse from your perspective than from the perspective of people who uh, aren't moving. So if we send a spaceship, you know, very, very near the speed of light, to a um, nearby star like Alpha Centauri, to us it would take several years, but to them it could possibly, you know, be a matter of uh, days, hours, of minutes, depending on how close to the speed of light they're going. So that means it's possible, in theory, to send humans to uh, other planets in our galaxy and for them to survive the entire trip, if you can get them, get them really, 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 really close to the speed of light. But it's obviously not very useful to us because by the time they make it to those planets we'll be dead and we won't be able to communicate with them because any radio message that we would try to send to them would go at the speed of light so it would take them years to receive it from our perspective at least so communicating with them would be useless um, they couldn't possibly come back in our lifetime unless they weren't going very far etc. Furthermore, even for us to go to the speed of light um, seems very difficult because it's going to take a lot of energy to accelerate a spaceship to those speeds an amount of energy that we currently you know can't possibly uh, put on a spaceship and something that's going to move and you know even to you know gather the amount of energy necessary seems extremely extremely impractical so there's a lot of technical challenges going on there you know it's not as promising as uh, what we can see in Star Trek. But anyways, what happens in Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica and shows like that? Well, in Star Trek, you know, they kind of cheat. They go faster than the speed of light by projecting their, their spaceship into what they call hyperspace, which is like an, an alternate dimension where things can travel faster than uh, the speed of light. And in Battlestar Galactica, they also cheat because they have this uh, jump device which we also see in uh, science fiction books and other science fiction series and the, the theory behind uh, jumping would be that if we could uh, fold space we could actually shrink the distance between two points in space so that those points would be really close and then traveling between those two points would be almost instant so what you see in Battlestar Galactica is that the ship basically disappears at one point and reappears very, very far in space instantly. Um, it's interesting to know that apparently um, Einstein's theory of general relativity doesn't forbid that it might be possible to fold space and to create uh, what's known as a, as a wormhole, which is like a tunnel between two points that are very far in space. So if, if we could create those wormholes and send spaceships through them, we could actually cheat and travel basically not really faster than light, but it would be you know the same outcome to us. That would allow us to go very far into space. Um, unfortunately, it's also not really looking promising 
for that kind of approach because um, well first of all our, our understanding of physics right now is too limited to really be able to know if wormholes are possible how to create one etc but I've also heard of figures that were enormous in terms of the energy requirements that would be required you know you're thinking about to create a wormhole that would go uh, to another star in our galaxy you know you're thinking you would need to disintegrate the entire sun for example to get enough energy to open this wormhole and maintain it for a very short amount of time and uh, you know this kind of energy we obviously can't really obtain you know we can't really disintegrate our sun because if we do that everybody on earth is going to die and etc that being said I think it's still you know there is hope because uh, you know the more time goes by the more we learn about physics and there's still so little that we know we don't really understand the very nature of the universe we don't really understand even what makes gravity you know right now they're, they're building this huge particle accelerator um, in Europe because they're hoping you know, to either prove or disprove that gravity particles or gravitons exist um, and hopefully they'll, they'll be able to make a breakthrough uh, when it goes into operation but uh, yeah I mean, as our understanding of physics progresses it's possible that we'll discover that there are in fact ways for us to uh, travel faster than light or to uh, generate things like anti-gravity or other uh, interesting things that might make our life much easier or allow us to do things that we just couldn't even think about doing before um, but yeah right now looking at uh, our current understanding of physics it looks like human beings might be trapped on earth forever or trapped to the solar system forever and in a sense that that kind of sucks you know you think you know stuff like Star Trek might never happen but you know in a sense also makes you realize that you know we only have one planet earth and we probably ought to uh, take care of it and not turn it into uh, a big dump because uh, you know if, if humanity is going to live on that planet until uh, the end of time until the end of uh, our sun our galaxy our universe then probably we want to keep it clean and uh, do something about it for our children because we might never be able to leave planet Earth to go somewhere else, you know. Because in a sense, it's kind of it's kind of sad because people <laughs> people hear about overpopulation and those kind of things, and, and sometimes I see people making comments, you know, oh, we need to discover a way to travel to other planets, you know, so we can es basically so we can escape the the mess that we made. But um, you know, it turns out that science says that we probably should keep our planet clean as much as possible. Okay, so that's all for uh, for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I just wanted to talk about something different. Okay, goodbye people.